Hello and welcome to JSA TV and JSA Podcasts, the newsroom for telecom and data center professionals. I'm Jean-Marc Lehman. Joining me today is Peter Hannaford, senior partner at the executive search company Portman Partners. Um, Peter, welcome to JSA. I know this is a bit of a delicate moment because you're talking just a couple of days after the Euro Championships, <laughs> but how are you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, um, I, I'm, to be honest, I'm glad it's over. Uh, you know, we can get on with work now. It became a bit more consuming. Obviously, very disappointed, but we all think that the team did really well. They're a very young team, and it's the World Cup next year. So, you know, fingers crossed. Uh, but, but I must say, the Italians played very well, so all credit to them. Yeah, I think the team will learn um, from what happened this time, and next year is going to be an amazing end um, I think it's just delayed. The coming home is delayed. <laughs> um, but look, talking about our industry now, um, I mean, you're an expert when it comes to finding talent. Um, and that's, that's what you do for a living as well. So what are the biggest hurdles in our space today when it comes to finding talent? Um, I, I suppose, you know, as you say, I've been in it a long time, uh, more or less since, since the word data center was started. So was that uh, 20 five years ago, something like that. Um, so I know a lot of people. Um, finding, uh, you know, finding the people isn't the problem, um, but bearing in mind that they're all, you know, passive, what we call passive high performers, they're, they're not looking to move, but they're at the top of their, their, top of their tree. The problem is always uh, convincing them to move. You're selling them a, you know, a dream, if you like. You're selling them the opportunity of a better job. So we have to know uh, the, the client, our client very well and we have to be convinced uh, that it would be a good move for this particular candidate. So, yeah, the, the challenge is getting them interested in the role, persuading them it's a better move. You know, this is a company with great people. Uh, you know, it's a great company uh, and potentially, you know, uh, a decent compensation as well. That's the challenge. It's just, it's just convincing them that this is a good opportunity. It's making dreams happen even without the people knowing they have a dream <laughs> like the one you're trying that's to tell them. Time, yeah, we create dreams. Yeah, that's a good... I'll put that in there. On our <laughs> write logo. it down, write the tagline down. Yeah, thank you for that. <laughs> <laughs> um, but look, a big part of the discussion today when it comes to staff as well, it's all around inclusivity and diversity. Um, from a recruitment standpoint, how is that kind of being embedded into what you're doing and what the industry is doing um, on the rec recruitment front, oh, it's massive. I mean, it's it's you know, there's four. Uh, you know, we we work in digital infrastructure. Um, that's all we work in, but we focus on leadership, uh, on on people with a passion for sustainability and uh, and diversity. It is it's mm -hmm. absolutely huge, and it really was uh, something that that kind of um, you know an epiphany for me a couple of years ago was was realizing that when we talk about diversity, we're talking about diversity of thinking. It isn't necessarily ticking boxes as to ethnicity or gender. It's about getting people that think differently um, because that's the way you get innovation. So we, we it's, it's massive now. And if not, you know, without exception, every client we work with now, uh, diversity is on their agenda too, especially gender imbalance as well. You know, that's that's pretty big now. And I've got to say that if we, you know, a lot, it wasn't so long ago where if we had to find, you know, someone with a, uh, an engineering qualification, uh, only 6% of, of women in, in the UK are qualified engineers. Um, therefore, it was very difficult. You know, if we've got to find 10, uh, submit 10 uh, resumes to, to a client, it was very rare that a, a woman would actually make the, the shortlist. Hmm. Now we're being asked, you have to try and find, you know, women to put on the shortlist. And if there were if there were 10 CVs and they were all equal, I think, that, you know, today the woman would get the job. Hmm. For sure. And I mean, we've seen a lot of the work as well that you've done with um, um, Terry. Um, and she's a massive driver when it comes she to these things. She's very persuasive, yes. yes. <laughs> and great and great at her job. She's the, she's the best there is. Yeah, she's a huge ambassador and she's driving change. Um, but you've already kind of mentioned a little bit of what you look for in these people um, and dealing with the boardroom because you basically you pretty much only deal with the boardroom, with the big guys. What kind of experience and uh, skills are you looking for 
when um, you go out there and look for someone at this stage? Well, well, it depends on the role, obviously. You know, CTO, chief sales officer, whatever, CEO. Depends what the role is. But what we do up front is we will always establish sort of six key uh, search criteria with the client hmm. uh, before we embark on a search. And then uh, we measure candidates against those criteria with the kind of scoring system. It's very subjective to start with, uh, but it gives the client an idea of where this person sort of fits. And they can be, I suppose, you know, in our world, in digital infrastructure, inevitably, uh, one of those um, one of those criteria would be uh, experience of the digital infrastructure sector, whether it's connectivity or data centers or something. But you would normally expect them to know. Not, not always, you know, if it's a financial or you know some other role, it's not always necessary. But I would say nine times out of ten, we're looking for people with some experience of the sector, um, and because it's a leadership role. Um, we're we're looking for people that, that I, I I would say make what we call immediate impact. So because this person is going to be a, a leader, uh, you have to ask the question, you know, what is your impression when you meet this person for the first time? You know, how do they look at speak and listen, hmm. um, and can they articulate uh, both verbally and in writing? Uh, could they articulate verbally in writing, you know, the, the benefits of the client solution, whatever that is. So this, this yes, it's, it's kind of an intangible, but when you, see, when you see it, you'd know it. You think this guy looks, or this woman, or this girl, whatever it is, they really look as though uh, they, could, they could do the job. So this immediate impact is still quite important. A bit of the gut feeling always coming in as well. <laughs> yeah. Um, and Peter, tell us a little bit more about Portman itself tell us about the business who's behind it um, of course you're a key piece of the, the puzzle here but tell us more about portman and what you've got planned for the future in terms of company well i mean you know recruitment per se is is a very uh, a competitive market as you say we're the only people really well there are more there's a few more players now in in uh, in recruitment and technical and, and search in, in our sector but yeah we you know 40 50 years experience that's a big advantage for us but mm. but nevertheless you know we are up against some of these you know major big firms um in in uh, executive search so we have to fight our corner therefore we're, in a, we're kind of in a state of con continual improvement really um we have to make the, the whole process um you know easy and efficient we're off to a head start because we know the industry and we will probably know the client so we don't spend a lot of time you know finding out about the job so that's pretty quick but we're also looking to make portman if you like uh the portal the go-to place for uh, information uh on uh, on the sector and developments in the sector worldwide so we want we want mm. people to catch us because we've got all that knowledge about the industry and about the people in it and about the companies in it and what they're doing you know we we want to make that the uh we want to make us the go-to firm. You come to us for the information. And that is all going to be put uh, on our website uh, with, you know, videos and, and podcasts like this as well, um, uh, which will drive the need to find the, the absolute best talent appropriate to the client's business. And it's all about, you know, the right person in the right company. So are we going to see more people, say, in Asia, more Portman partner people in Asia um, uh, and other yeah. con continents? Well, we already have somebody in Asia, so we've got someone in uh, in Singapore, uh, and we have someone in London. I think the next place we will have somebody is probably in the US. We don't have it. I tend to look after the US myself. I have somebody else that majors on Europe, somebody that majors on Asia. But I'm I'm kind of uh, you know behind it, helping with with research. But yeah, I think the US is probably the next the next place where we'll have uh, uh, some form of um, beachhead. Yeah. I look forward to seeing who that is. <laughs> um, and Peter, if people want, if people want to find out more about Portman Partners or get in touch, where could people go to um, to check out more? Uh, well, the website. So uh, we're trying to make the website the central repository for information uh, and for uh, uh, blogs. We, we 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 tend to we like we like to store them in what we call a library. So it's a permanent place you can go and check up on on various uh, on various things. And we have you know, 
people like Terry and, and you know, people like Ian Bitterlin who have always got something to say about something. Uh, we will we will give them a voice uh, on on our website to be able to articulate, you know, whatever whatever's in their mind at the time. Uh, but of course, but we also use LinkedIn. Our LinkedIn page is probably the place uh, where we post all the latest developments and information. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, I think uh, following us on if you follow us on LinkedIn, you'll be kept up to date uh, with all the latest stuff mm -hmm. that we're doing. Hmm. I definitely am. So that's, that's how I keep track. And that's how I'm going to keep track of this new US person <laughs> when that happens. Um, but Peter, thank you so much for talking to us. Um, and thank you, our viewers, for tuning into JSA TV and JSA podcasts. And don't forget to check our social media channels for more content. Until next time, happy networking.